Okay, so today we're going to talk about how we geometrically prove that triangles are congruent. So the important thing to talk about first is what do we mean by geometrically prove? If I was to tell you to algebraically prove something, you wouldn't use equations to solve for the sides and then that's how you could prove that they are congruent. But instead, we're going to geometrically prove it, which means that we're going to take the um, theorems and the rules that we've learned up until now as reasons why these triangles are congruent. So if you remember, there's a bunch of different ways to prove triangles are congruent. There's side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and HL. So those are the kind of things we're going to use to prove that these triangles are congruent. So that given, so we're always going to start off with a given statement. Given D is the midpoint of AC and that AB is congruent to BC, the directions should say prove triangles are congruent. So first what we want to do is take note of the information they give us. So we know that AB is congruent to BC. And that's always going to be our first step. Our first statement is that AB is congruent to BC. And our reason for that is simply given, because we are told right here that that's true. The next thing we're told is that D is the midpoint of AC. So first we're going to say that D is the midpoint of AC. And that is also a given. So if D is the midpoint of AC, which is this segment right here, if you remember what it means to be a midpoint, that means that D divides AC into two congruent pieces. So for our next thing, we're going to say that AD is congruent to DC, and then our reason is going to be the definition of a midpoint, because that's how we know that these two are congruent. Okay, so so far we have one pair of congruent sides, two pairs of congruent sides, so most likely we're going to be doing a side, side, side pr proof. If you notice, they share this side right here, BD. Well, we have this little theorem that says BD is congruent to BD because it's the same line so it, it has to have the same measure as itself and our reason for this is called the reflexive property that's like saying 5 is equal to 5 well obviously 5 has to equal 5 and the length of BD has to equal the length of BD so now we have three pairs of congruent sides. So for our last step, we can say, therefore, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD by side, side, side. That's how we always finish our proof, is by saying, therefore, the triangles are congruent, or therefore, the parallelograms are congruent, or something like that. So now we're going to do one more practice proof for today. So given that QT and is parallel to RS, so QT is parallel to RS, and QR is parallel to TS, prove that triangle RQ RTQ 
is congruent to T R S. Okay, so we're told that these two, we have two pairs of parallel lines. Well, if you remember, there is a special kind of angle formed when when parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So if we look at this, these two parallel lines first, this one and this one, you can see that it's cut by this transversal, TR. And if you remember, if you look, these two these two parallel lines right here have this angle and this angle. And if you remember, these two angles are called alternate interior angles. Remember when that Z forms? They're called alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are congruent. So we can say, first we have to write down the given information. QT parallel to RS and QR parallel to TS and that's given. Okay, so for our next thing we're going to say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 because of and our reason is that if lines are parallel then their alternate interior angles are congruent. Now, if you look, we have two sets of parallel lines, which means we have two sets of alternate interior angles. So if we're talking about these two lines that are parallel, and it's cut by this transversal, you can see that angle 1 and angle 3 are alternate interior angles for those two lines. So in the same step we can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 and that has the same reason that if lines are parallel then their alternate interior angles are congruent. And we have one more step. So so far we have two pairs of congruent angles. Now if you look the, these two triangles share this side TR. So TR is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And now if you look we have we have one angle congruent to one angle the included sides are congruent and we have another angle congruent to another angle. If you remember there's a property called angle side angle. Oh, I'm writing it on the wrong side. So therefore the triangle RTQ is congruent to triangle TRS by angle side angle. So that's all we're doing with proofs today, but make sure you come back and and we're going to be talking about constructing congruent segments and different kinds of segments we can construct.